All right, so welcome to Essential Oils for Animals. Um, I get to talk about two of my favorite things in the world tonight, um, essential oils and animals. We are going to go over what are essential oils, um, why we use doTERRA, how to use the oils, and then how to get them. But first, let me tell you a little bit about me and why I'm sitting here talking to you about this. Um, these are my five rescue dogs. The three on the bottom have passed away. They gained their, their wings. Um, the top two are still with me. I, I um, rescue senior dogs and they all come to me with uh, medical issues. So I get to use um, my oils and other stuff to help uh, improve their health and um, try to help them live longer, healthier lives. I started using essential oils about 10 years ago for myself. I had um, a MRSA infection and uh, I, after a couple of years of antibiotics, I decided to um, venture out on my own and I found these amazing essential oils and um, been using them instead of pharmaceuticals or over-the-counter medications um, for over 10 years. Um, the doTERRA big picture I started um, about five years ago when I met my friend at the dog park and she told me that she did the essential oils with doTERRA and um, she showed me how I could use other oils. And so once I saw what was available and how they could help um, my life and my health and my home, um, I started teaching classes within that week because I love sharing knowledge. I think that knowledge is power. I think that all of us are doing the best that we can for our families and for our pets. And, um, you know, what we don't know um, can, can really change our lives. And so I like to offer the information to people. And if it's something that fits with um, what they're trying to do, then I've done my job. And if they don't think it fits, then, um, then they go do their thing and that's fine. Okay, so what are essential oils? They are just extracts from plants. Um, they've been used for thousands of years for um, medicinal purposes. Um, they're the extracts from the seeds, the roots, the stems, the flowers. Um, and in the case of fruits, they are the rind. And the essential oils, if you, walk through a rose garden and you smell the roses or you take a piece of fruit and you cut it open like a lemon and you smell that amazing aroma, those are the essential oils. Um, they are actually little sacks of, um, of oils in the plants that help to protect them um, from any type of invader, whether it be mold or insects. And so those components of the essential oils can do the same types of things for us. They're really highly concentrated, um, 50 to 70 times more powerful than herbs. So one drop of peppermint essential oil is the equivalent of 28 cups of peppermint tea. And can you imagine if you have an upset stomach, how much more upset your stomach would be if you had to drink 28 cups of peppermint tea. Um, I love peppermint. Um, the other thing that I want to say about the, um, the essential oils is that there's three different grades of essential oils. And let me see if I can, oops, sorry. I wanted to try and share something else. Oh, anyway, there's three different grades. There's the synthetic grade, and that is um, like lemon pledge 
uh, cleaning product. Um, it smells lemony, but there's nothing lemon in that pledge. It's all synthetic fragrance. Um, then there's the food grade essential oils. And those are the ones that they put in like chewing gum um, to make it minty flavored or um, um, cookies that have the orange uh, flavoring. Um, so those are called uh, generally regarded as safe from the FDA and they're put into foods. And then the last one is um, the therapeutic grade essential oils. And that's what we're talking about here. That's what I use to help get rid of my MRSA. Um, and that's what we use here for our health and for um, wellness and cleaning and all the things that, um, that you would buy products in the stores for. So the reason that we love doTERRA is because they source the essential oils from plants all over the world. So for instance, um, our frankincense comes from frankincense um, trees on the cliffs of Somalia. If you were to um, get frankincense from another company that say grew their frankincense trees in Oregon, you would be getting a whole different plant because they're, they're, they're supposed to be um, grown in the proper um, soil, in the, the proper um, climate, um, and all of those things make a huge difference in the quality of the plant, and then from the plant we get the extract. They have to be harvested at the right time if you harvest them early or too late, you're also going to get different um, constituents in the essential oils. And so all of that stuff makes a really big difference. The testing is amazing. Um, they are rigorously tested internally and externally, and they check for um, fillers and toxins, pesticides, contaminants, um, all kinds of things that you wouldn't want to bring into your home. Uh, there is, no, it's not there. Um, there's a, a website called source to you.com and on the bottom of each bottle of essential oil, you can um, take that batch number and put it into the source to you.com and it will come back with the test results from that batch of oils. So it's transparency um, with, um, with being able to see, uh, we have Debbie's joining us, um, being able to see um, what the test results are and It's so hard to make this stuff happen. Connecting to audio. Um, okay, so we love our uh, doTERRA essential oils. Um, Jill, did you have anything that you wanted to add about um, it's not letting me. I'm trying to unmute you. It should be on the bottom left. Oh, there we go. Did you have anything um, that you wanted to add about um, why you use doTERRA brand? Tina makes me. <laughs> And Tina is the smartest lady we know. So if she okay. says that these are the right ones, then you follow her word. Right? Okay. That you know what? That's the, the best answer I could million times for every little thing that um, mm -hmm. happens and 
she guides me through everything and and um you know i, I know how to use all of these oils and everything yeah. and do they work uh yes yeah sometimes they don't i had um a real bad um uh situation where i had diarrhea really bad and yeah I did digestion i did peppermint capsules and nothing else so yeah but normally, uh, she has um, got me on the vitality pills, and it's lowered my blood pressure and all. I mean, I'm a firm believer of that. And, yeah. Uh, uh, everything normally, you know, like the cleaning supplies and hair products and everything else. I mean, yeah. And it's so good for your, um, your, your pets because it's reducing the amount of toxins that you're exposing them to in the house. Right. And that's what's new for me is mm -hmm. them to my pet. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, oh, I think Debbie, Debbie made it. Come on down, Debbie. I'm trying to unmute you, Debbie. It's not letting me. Oh, yeah, there we go again. Wait, I know. Bottom right corner. There we go. Debbie. Okay. <laughs> isn't, yeah. te te isn't technology fun? Okay. Um, so, we <laughs> yeah, that's so I know, I know. <laughs> um, you'll be able to see the recording of the first part that you missed. So right now we're just talking about um, how to use the essential oils. And this is true for people and for pets. So there's three ways to use them. There's um, aromatically, which is in a diffuser. It just puts the essential oils into the air. Um, aromatically also is just opening the bottle and smelling it. You don't even have to um, take drops out of the, the bottle. One of the ways that I think is special that we can use them aromatically for our pets is um, to either use like an old rolled up sock and put a couple drops on that and put it in the area where they are. Um, or we can put it in a spray bottle um, diluted properly and um, spray it on a little bandana that we put around their neck. And so they have their own personal little diffuser that they're walking around with. Um, I, I don't recommend that we, we do that for ourselves, but it's a, a great way to, um, to especially like calming pets. Um, it, it, you know, it has the oils right there and it definitely helps calm them. Um, then we use them topically. Um, this we use for skin issues, um, insect repellent, of course. We have our um, flea and tick spray. Uh, immune support, we can take diluted oils and rub it on um, their paw pads, and that's going to be topically. Um, with the topical application, it, uh, the essential oil absorbs through the skin, and it goes into the bloodstream, and it travels all through the body. Um, it gets to all of the organs. Um, that happens within about 20 minutes. And then within about three hours, all of the essential oils are out of the system. They're not like um, the products that you would get uh, from the drugstore or the vet where they can actually build up in the body. Um, we don't wanna do that. We just want to, to assist the body in um, uh, helping it heal itself with whatever we're dealing with. And then the last way is internally. Um, this is something that's different about doTERRA essential oils that um, some of them can be used in some cases with our pets um, internally. Uh, for instance, I have a big uh, metal bowl of water for my dogs and I'll put a drop of lemon essential oil in it and that's cleansing for their system. Um, also, uh, for the or, go ahead. I thought you were going to say something. Does it have to be um, a metal bowl? Uh, metal or, or glass. Okay. Yeah. 
And uh, as long as we're talking about that, um, I, I will tell you that um, plastic bowls are not um, the healthiest way to, and you know, listen, Jill, I did every single thing that I will tell you about not to do with your pets. I did every one of them, <laughs> every single one of them. Uh, yeah. So um, the, the plastic, even if you're not using essential oils, um, it can cause rashes on their face. Um, it's harder to clean because, you know, things can get uh, into the plastic that you aren't necessarily able to um, wash off. And then it has um, some, uh, the, the ones that are non-BPA have chemicals in them that can transfer into whatever's in the dish and then into your pet. So the safest thing to do is to get glass or um, high quality stainless steel. And we use that for ourselves for the essential oils. If we're gonna drink, you know, have a water bottle, um, we're gonna use those uh, materials to drink the, the um, essential oils in, right? Um, the other ways that we can use the essential oils with pets is, um, like for oral health, you can make a, a toothpaste. Um, and so that is going to get a little bit of the essential oils, um, into their system. And as long as you're using the doTERRA essential oils and you are diluting properly, you're supporting their immune system. Um, and that's a good thing because... Can you use paste though that you get from uh, doTERRA on the pet? No. Okay. No. Um, I am going to say that it has xylitol in it. And I don't know if that's true. But xylitol can be fatal. Right. So, um, so I'm glad you asked. I will check on that, but I've never heard anybody say, oh yeah, and we use the doTERRA toothpaste for the animals. Um, so I, it's easier to just use coconut oil and uh, baking soda and a drop of um, On Guard and then use that on a cloth and rub their little teeth. Okay. Um, essential oil tips and safety. This is true for people and pets. We never put the essential oils in any of the sensitive um, orifices of our, our face um, or private parts. Um, they're just way too strong. So if you're going to put something near the eyes, make sure that it's far enough far enough away from the eyes and it's diluted, um, never in the ear canal, never in um, the nasal passageways. Um, and that's uh, true with our animals as well. They're, they're even more sensitive than we are. Um, you always wanna dilute with a carrier oil, whether it's fractionated coconut oil or grapeseed, um, olive oil. Uh, you don't want to dilute with water because uh, the essential oil does not mix with water. Um, follow the label directions. That means that if you're looking at um, something to use, say internally, you're looking to make sure that it has the supplemental facts on the bottle. And then just like we were talking about uh, using the, um, the essential oils in a glass or a bowl, you're gonna want to use um, the stainless steel or um, glass containers. Debbie, can I ask you, um, are you currently using essential oils? No, I am not. Um, I had a friend give me some, um, but I haven't, I have not used them. I'm trying to get information before I do. Okay, and, and what kind of pets do you have? Um, I have the world's most beautiful Boston Terrier dog. Oh. <laughs> okay, 
So we're talking about 20 pounds? Uh, yeah, a little less, but yeah, about 20 okay. pounds. Okay, all right. All right, so now, Jill, this is why you're here. Um, we're going to talk about some of the guidelines to using the essential oils with your pets. Um, and when it says know your pet, um, just this is about being aware of what their normal behaviors are and then um, observing a observing behaviors that are not normal for them. Um, and that's how we can tell that they're not feeling well, right? Um, they're a, a little bit um, slower in their movement. Um, they don't want to eat. Um, their stomach's making loud noises. Uh, so when, when we are observing them, we know how they're doing and um, then we also know when they're having a, a reaction to something that they, um, they don't like or their body's not responding positively with. So as always, we just wanna be mindful pet parents and, um, and just keep an eye on, on how they are responding to a new type of um, blend that you have in the diffuser, you know? Um, if they leave the room as soon as you turn it on, you, you know that they don't like that one, <laughs> right? Um, and that's what this talks about, um, avoidance. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, I've never had um, any of my dogs leave a room when I have a certain oil, but I don't have really super picky dogs. There are some that are, you know, really particular and those dogs or cats, I don't have any cats and I understand that they're even um, uh, more particular, um, they will let you know if they don't like something. Try and make it a positive experience if you're introducing um, the essential oils to them maybe with a treat. Some people like to do aromatic selection. So um, I think this is great with horses. Uh, you can take a couple bottles of essential oils. Um, you don't even have to take the, the caps off of them and put a couple in front of the animal and um, they will let you know which one they like, which one um, they, they want because our animals are really intuitive about what their body needs. So um, if you ever want to just, um, just try it out and, and Again, you don't have to take the lid off of the, the bottle. You just put the bottle um, in front of them or a couple bottles and see how they respond. Um, they, they may start licking one of the bottles or they may just turn around and, and walk away. So that's, that's uh, something that you can try. Um, you always want to have an escape route. So regardless of what type of animal you have. Um, if you have a diffuser going in a room, make sure that they're not closed into the room so that if they decide that they want to leave, um, they can. Did you do that, Jill? Oh, no, I haven't really used the oils on my dog yet. That's why. No, I, for, for I, the diffuser, for the diffuser. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's always out in the open. Yeah, yeah. Get around. Okay, um, these are obvious um, that you wanna use caution if you have a pregnant nursing, um, a very young, meaning you know a, a super young puppy or an elderly frail animal. Um, and then also uh, if your animal is on medication, you wanna be mindful of, um, of what oils you're using and that kind of goes along with, um, you know, if they're if they have cancer and they're receiving treatments for um, for cancer with chemotherapy, uh, the topical treatment, the um, the flea and tick medication, um, which we try to figure out a way not to use those because there's so many um, problems that that 
they can cause. Um, but if you do use the topical flea and um, tick medication, you don't want to use the oils on top of that. And there's a lot of education out there. We have um, a, a number of um, vets that are on the um, veterinary advisory board for doTERRA. Um, we have, a, there's a book out there called Spoil Your Pet. Um, there's another one, uh, it's the ADR2, it's the Animal Desk Reference, and that has a, a lot of information. And then Dr. Janet Rourke, she just um, published her own book. So we'll be taking a look at that. All right, so this is where we get into dilution. And this, I think, is pretty fascinating because it just shows how concentrated the oils are. Wow. Right? Yeah. So we are looking at 1% to 4% dilution, which means one drop of essential oil to 100 drops of carrier oil which is 10 milliliters. So, um, uh, so the 10 milliliter is the, the roller ball that um, you can get from doTERRA for the different um, blends, right? So one drop of essential oil is 1%. Yeah. And for your dog, Jill, I would, I would start with 1% if you're gonna be using anything. And now this is for topical or internal application. If you're talking about diffusing the oils, um, I put six to 10 drops of essential oils in my diffuser, but if someone is just starting to use them around their animal, we're gonna start with two drops. Just because they're so much more sensitive and then see how they respond to that. Um, sometimes an animal will like try and get close to the diffuser so that they can get more of it. Um, and uh, so, you know, once they do that and you see that they're okay, um, you can slowly add a couple more drops and watch and see how they respond. But it's going into the air in tiny little particles. Um, and again, they need to be able to leave the room. So we have one to 4% dilution. Um, and then for cats and uh, small pets, like the, the five pound um, dogs, um, we have the half percent to 1%. And so that's one drop of essential oils to 200 drops of carrier oil. And um, what's amazing is that it's so effective, even at that incredible amount of dilution. Um, but the thing that I stress, um, the, the three things that I stress that are the most important for using the essential oils with animals um, is doTERRA essential oils, dilution, and then more dilution. Okay, so dilution is so critical. And when you see those really scary stories um, about, you know, some animal was injured, um, w when you find out what the particulars are with the story is um, they're using a product from uh, Amazon or Walmart, and they used a half a bottle. Um, so as long as you're using high quality, you're using it properly for your pet, um, you will see good results. I know I traveled um, on an airplane with my dog and she, mm -hmm. It was in my lap, and I, I think I probably used a lot of lavender oil. I wasn't wiping it on her head. 
I probably used too much, but she came through. Yeah. But well, I'm, I, I'm realizing now about the diluting it for an animal. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so that's good that you're learning that. And so, um, so that won't happen again. Exactly. But, but when you're using the, the high quality ones, it's, it's really, for them to become injured like they talk about, it's, it's way more than you would ever reasonably use. But we don't even want to go there. So, you know, just, um, just make sure that um, you want to dilute more and then you can always add a little bit more essential oils if um, it's too diluted. Okay. The reflexology chart is really cool um, because putting the essential oils on the paw pads um, is a great way to apply topically. And with this chart, it shows you the correlation between um, different parts of the body that are connected to these spots on, um, on the paws. So That's the hind paws? It, it is the hind paws, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so especially these areas that you wouldn't be able to get to otherwise. Um, you know, the heart, uh, the trachea, lungs. Um, of course, all of these can be helped with um, diffusing oils. Um, but if, if you have time and, and you like to do that, this is another way to um, help support your pet's health. I'm gonna go through, um, I think it's about 10 oils. Um, these are some of the, uh, the more useful um, standard oils that we use for pets. Um, lavender, of course, you just said, Jill, you used it um, on the airplane, is fantastic for any sort of um, calming, whether it's emotional or physical, we use it. Um, to help uh, calm them if they're anxious, uh, put it on their skin if there's uh, an abrasion or an irritation. Um, if they have surgery, we can use this to help, uh, help the body heal in the surgical site. It also um, helps support um, the body in not getting an infection. So lavender's great for um, uh, diluting. It's great for topical application. Um, I wouldn't necessarily um, use it internally, although if you put it on them and they lick it off of themselves, there's no problem because it's a very small amount and it's a high quality oil. So would you use the lavender to maybe help calm your pet for maybe fireworks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And how would you suggest, I mean, would, would I tie, put a little bit on a, maybe a bandana or a scarf and maybe just tie it around her collar? Um, yeah. So uh, you could take a bandana and make a diluted spray um, and then spray it on the, um, the bandana. There's a couple other oils that we're going to talk about that are also really useful for um, calming. Um, Lavender is always a go-to. There's some other ones that, um, that you can use as well. So this just gives you an idea. Um, of course, you can diffuse the, the lavender, um, applying it topically, say for calming Jill, um, you would put one to two drops of the 1% uh, dilution. Um, let's see, what does this say? Um, one teaspoon to one drop uh, for up to 20 pounds and one teaspoon um, to two drops for over 20 pounds. So you can see um, how little is needed 
and right right so um diffusing before the stressful event happens so like if you're going to go on the airplane um you want to start uh getting the the lavender in front of her um 30 minutes before you board the plane um, you don't want to wait until you're in the middle of whatever it is that's um, anxiety causing and then try and start to do it. In the seat in the airplane. Yeah. Um, this talks about the spray bottle. You can put it on the bedding. You can put it on the toys. Um, like you said, the bandana. Um, you can put it in their shampoo. It smells really good. Um, you can also apply it to the back of the neck and the, um, the base of the ears. So those are good places to put it so that it can um, absorb into the bloodstream and help calm them down. As long as it's diluted, um, you should be good. Whoa. Okay. Um, and then lavender is one of the essential oils that we have in a, a recipe for ear health. So this gives you an idea of the essential oils. Um, I think for the smaller animals, I would want it diluted a lot more than this, but this gives you an idea of um, which essential oils are good for helping your pets when they are having some sort of ear discomfort. So instead of running to the vet and getting a course of antibiotics and uh, some uh, ear um, solution, you can go to your essential oils medicine cabinet and put this together. And I've done this, I don't know how many times. Um, I, I actually pretty much stopped going to the vet uh, the last few years because I have everything I need at home. Um, so I really like being able to do that. I like being able to um, address these, these issues um, in a safer way and not have to stress their immune system with, um, with the medications. All right, frankincense. Um, this is another one that's really great for calming. So um, this would be a good one to add to the lavender to put on the spray. Uh, this is also really good for um, brain function. This is, has cellular renewal. So anytime there is an issue with um, uh, cells that are growing um, and mutating that we want to stop. Frankincense um, can help address that. We have um, uh, one, one of the gals in our group has been helping her senior Weimariner for over a year now. He has um, mast cell tumors and um, she's been able to address those and help resolve them um, using frankincense and a couple other oils by applying them topically and um, internally. So frankincense is a, a really incredible essential oil. You figure if, um, if this was something that they brought to the baby Jesus, it, it must uh, be really valuable and, and it is. Um, I, do, you, do you use this one, Jill? Yes. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's a go-to. Right. So this is going to be one of the ones that you're going to um, use for any type of skin or um, uh, anxiety. Okay. Even more powerful than the lavender. Um, the other great thing about the frankincense is that it is an 
incredible pain relief uh, oil. So adding to the, uh, adding um, this to um, say your pup's food, if they're having discomforts or using this in a blend to um, rub on their leg is injured um, or something like that is a, a great way to support them so that you're not using the painkillers or um, the NSAIDs, all of those medications that can be really, really um, stressful to the liver and kidneys. Um, when in doubt, get the frankincense out. We, we love our frankincense. Um, yeah. So uh, one drop um, to one teaspoon of carrier oil um, for under 20 pounds, and then um, one teaspoon to two to four drops for over 20 pounds. So the four drops would be for um, my 90 pound dog. Um, my 60 pound dog would probably get the two drops. All right. Lemongrass. Uh, are you a fan of this, Jill? Uh, yes, I use that in. Uh, what do I use that for? Um, one of my uh, concoctions for uh, back pain, or um, I used it for. Uh, I've had a person's shoulder, and I use that on that. Okay. Yes, so lemongrass is wonderful for, um, for discomfort, whether it's muscle or joint. Um, it's also one of the oils that we use in our um, flea, tick, and uh, mosquito repellent because insects do not like lemongrass. Yes, I love the smell of lemongrass, but the bugs don't. Um, it's also good for urinary tract support. So um, if, if you have any um, UTIs um, with your animals or um, incontinence, um, this can be helpful for that. All right. Uh, so right here is our DIY flea and tick spray. Um, this is not the only one, but this is the one that I am liking right now for a lot of people. Um, the lemongrass is one of the oils in that. And um, it's incredible. This is one of the least, I think it is the least expensive oil that we have at $10 for the um, 15 milliliter. And it's great for um, we cook with it. Uh, I have friends who use this every day to lower their cholesterol so they don't have to take cholesterol medicine. Um, helps with blood pressure, blood sugar, um, different uh, um, stomach bacterial infections. Um, and again, with the, the muscle and joint, it helps decrease pain. So this is a great one to have, uh, especially if you have dogs. All right, cedar wood. This is another one that is really good for um, repelling insects. Um, it's also very calming. So you could take the cedar wood along with the um, lavender and make a a blend out of that for a spray that would be calming for your animal. Um, it also is really good for respiratory support. So putting this in a diffuser would be great for that. Um, one of the things about cedar wood, and this is one of the oils that we have um, in the, the flea and tick spray, is that it kills flea eggs. So 
if you're in an area that has problems with fleas, uh, this is a good one to have. Uh, this is safe for cats uh, to diffuse and it's good to blend with um, the balanced grounding blend for, um, for anxiety. And, and the thing, Debbie, you're going to hear me talk about, um, you know, you can use this, you can use that. Some people, some pets respond better to this oil or that oil. So, um, and, and if you have a recipe and it calls for these four oils and you have two of the four, then you're gonna use those two because they're gonna cover um, the, the issues that you're, you're trying to address. So it, it, it makes it easier to not have to have all of them and to try the ones that you have and see if they, they do what, what you're looking for them to do. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, all right, so cedar wood is good for emotional as well as um, physical issues. It's a good one to have. Digest them. This is the one that I use probably the most um, with my pets for an issue. Um, and, you know, if they eat something and I can hear their stomach grumbling from across the house, um, I dilute some digestin, I rub it on their tummy, and within a half an hour, that grumbling is gone and whatever was causing it is resolved. Um, we had, uh, my boy had just incredible diarrhea out of nowhere uh, a couple weeks ago and kind of scared me because I had never seen him um, do that before. And so I brought him home and I diluted some digestion, put it on his stomach and I did it two more times before we went to bed. Um, when we got up in the morning, I put some more digestion on his stomach and then uh, we had uh, late breakfast and I took him for his walk and he had a perfectly formed poop and I was shocked. Yeah. So um, this one is, is good to have. I don't use it every day, but um, when I need it, it's, it's effective. The other thing about the digestion is if your animal has uh, some sort of um, parasite like worms, there's a protocol that you can use with digestin to get rid of them. So looking for ways to not introduce um, the, uh, the medicines that we give them for things, um, this, this is a good one for that. And then also it's good for motion sickness. I, I haven't had a pet that has that, but I, I know there are some that get really yeah i wondered about that like i told mm -hmm. the driver across the united states this last week yeah she was a car sick or not i mean she was just she wasn't really lethargic in the um car but she just slept the whole time so i didn't know if she was kind of car sick or yeah what. i think so what the the car sick we're talking about, and this is with people and pets, is that, you know, you get dizzy and throw up. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of more like a, a motion sickness. Um, I think uh, when they just sleep, it's because they're comfortable. <laughs> she got to sleep and not me. Yeah. That's, yep, that's right. Um, so the, the digestion it's great for um, constipation. It's great for um, diarrhea, any type of stomach upset. We love digestion. Um, on guard, this is the one that I used for uh, my MRSA. This is, this is my personal antibiotic. Um, like I was saying, you can use it um, 
mix it with baking soda uh, and water. And I would put some coconut oil in there too. Um, and make your own toothpaste for your pet. Um, but this is just so, so good for um, immune support. Um, use it for cleaning spray. Uh, I use it in my, my feeding area because I feed my dogs raw. So I always want to make sure that it's um, clean and I don't leave any pathogens um, in the, the prep area. So um, on guard is the, the blend that we use to make sure that we kill. That's the one you make the face with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this one, again, it's good for um, dogs and cats. You can diffuse it. Um, you can use it topically. And um, this one's just good for, for overall uh, immune support and promoting wellness um, if your dog is having issues with their immune system. Balance is a really helpful um, blend to use with pets. It's another one that's great for calming. Um, if they're having any type of issues uh, with sleep um, or anxiousness, you can use that to help calm them down. So diffusing it is great, um, topical application is good. Um, because of the, um, the oils that are in it, it's helpful for um, muscles. So you can use this along with some lemongrass and um, use that as a massage oil to help uh, any sort of muscle aches. The topical application is basically the same for all of them as far as the dilution. And then Copaiba. Are you a Copaiba user? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so this one is fantastic as an anti-inflammatory. It's calming. It's, um, it's great for um, pain. So uh, using this along with the frankincense, um, we have a gal who's, whose dog has uh, had a wound that the, the vet is treating and they gave her painkillers that weren't helping him. And she's been using the copaiba and the frankincense um, internally, he's a hundred pounds. So um, that's a, a, the dilution doesn't have to be as great, but the um, pain relief that he's getting um, is better than what he was getting from the, the pain medication. So that's, that's good. Um, Let's see. Um, when, and this doesn't have to do with using it for animals, but using it um, around animals. When I lost uh, my Barney, um, I think I drank Copaiba. I was putting a couple drops under my tongue every hour just to um, help uh, with the, the feelings of grief. And um, I'm so glad that I had it because it really helped kind of take the edge off so that it wasn't, um, it wasn't as bad as it could have been, I guess. So here's the dilution chart that I have in the group and that I use personally and um, always suggest to people that they save or um, download. This comes from uh, Dr. Janet Rourke. And especially if you have a small animal, um, it is going to help, um, help you figure out like if you're doing a flea and tick spray. Um, let's see. 
Um, oops. I want to see. Okay, so this is the dilution chart that I recommend. Um, I want to talk about the cost of the essential oils. I know um, a lot of times people will see the cost of the essential oils and say, oh my gosh, that's so expensive. Um, and I, I encourage you to look at all of the different things that these essential oils can do, the products that they can uh, replace. And knowing that each bottle has uh, 250 drops in it, you're looking at using um, it by the drop. Then you see how much um, the drop of essential oil costs and how much um, overall you're going to be saving as well as the fact that you're going to have less toxins in your home. So I just wanted to show you just to give you an idea of how you save money using the essential oils. Um, this is for a person, but it could very well be for uh, a pet. You have an ear issue and you need to go to the doctor and get medication. And so you're going to have your time going to the doctor. You're going to have your copay. You're going to have your medicines. Um, you're probably going to need supplements after your medicines to help restore your, uh, your um, gut bacteria. And so you're going to end up spending $30 easily. Uh, with the essential oils, you can use a couple drops of each of these bottles. Um, in this case, it's basil, lavender, and melaleuca, and end up spending 72 cents. Um, so this is how, in the long run, we save a lot of money, um, as well as improving our, um, our health and immune system. I was talking about the um, flea and tick and mosquito spray. Um, this is one of the ones that we recommend. Depending on where you live, you may need some of these and not others. Um, that's something that we can talk about. I love to help people figure out what's best for their home, their pet, their situation. Um, but this recipe right here um, has been used by a number of people and is really effective. All right, so there's a couple little um, starter kits that we have put together just to give you an idea of what you can get and what type of cost you're looking at. Um, this would be the mini um, starter kit. This would give you um, the basic oils that you need for uh, insect repellent. Um, it uh, also comes with your wholesale membership and um, of course all the support and education that, um, that we give in an ongoing basis. And then uh, if you want a larger kit, we have the ultimate kit that um, has a couple added oils, the Copaiba and Digestin. We talked about both of those. And uh, with this one, with our group, you can choose um, two of these bottles that uh, you could use to make different sprays with the oils that you get. So if you want to get started, I um, am happy to help you. If you're already working with somebody else, then you need to talk to them and have them help you get started. Um, we have uh, 
special kits that doTERRA has set up that you can get started with, and that includes the wholesale membership. Um, depending on what you're looking to, to get for your home, the enrollment kit might not be um, ideal for you. And then uh, I am happy to help you figure out what is best for your home to get you started. And that's it. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I look forward to hearing from you. Any questions that I can answer, uh, any support that I can give you. This is just a basic essential oils class. And um, I hope that you will embrace these oils like I have because they really truly have changed my life and um, the way I do just about everything. All right, so I hope you have a great night and I will uh, look forward to talking to you. All right, now I just need to end.